Viva Tequila Seltzer, the number go. one hard seltzer in the world and the official hard seltzer of Day Drinking With Dog. Ditch the malt, add tequila. Welcome back, everybody. I got my good friend Tony G is back in the house. We are two weeks, just two measly weeks away from November 7th, the day we vote for the mayor of Milford and a lot of other stuff in Milford. Uh, Tony, thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, pop in and say hello to me. Yeah, I, I appreciate you inviting me back. It's great to be here, and uh, that sweatshirt looks great yeah, on Yeah, yeah. For everyone watching <laughs> on YouTube, the Tony G sweatshirt, I got the... Uh, I got the sign behind me from the last time you were here. I got the logo over your head. Uh, I'm just going to come right out and say it. Uh, I'm endorsing you for Mayor of Milford. Um, not just because you're on the show, but because uh, a lot of reasons, to be honest with you. Uh, I've seen a lot of your videos. Uh, I know you've been fundraising a lot. I have a lot of friends within the small business industry within Milford that all endorse you. I know you're probably the, not probably, you are the right guy for the job. And uh, again, uh, Thanks for coming, and uh, let's get down to some uh, some stuff you're running on. And uh, we're going to start right out with, uh, I think we talked about this last time you were on the show, but like, what inspired you to run for the Mayor Milford? So first I'd like to say thank you very much uh, for the endorsement. I, I, I truly appreciate it. And, 100%. And, um, you know, I've been in local government, public service is what I like to describe my job it's public yeah. service and it's become a part of me it's grown uh, through my tenure as alderman so i've really come to a point in my life where i know what people expect from their local government from their city government and i want to meet those needs of the people i'm, I'm proud to be from milford it's 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 a great uh, city to grow up in it's given me so much opportunity so it's like my way of giving back and it's something that you know just evolved right it, this was not a plan I never thought that I would actually be you know in the position where I can run but I do have the experience I do have you know the the energy to make a difference you know in, in the city in a positive way. So that's what really compelled me to run. Excellent. Uh, let's get into the, the brass tacks of some of the stuff you're running on. Um, as far as like a current budget of the town, uh, how do you plan to allocate resources uh, towards our most uh, pressing needs, such as education, law enforcement, public safety, especially, you know, in the climate we live in now, I feel a lot of people don't really feel safe uh even in a town like milford which is uh quite striking in the times we live in uh i don't i wouldn't have said that 10 years ago but um how do you look to go about that and and you know i don't know if it's a percentage thing or you're gonna allocate a certain money for that and that what are your plans there well that comes with my knowledge of balancing 16 budgets and being on the board and i've had the privilege of working side by side with three mayors so I've had a front row seat to allocating a fiscal responsible budget, and it will be challenging. Mm. We've actually balanced budgets in recessions. We've balanced budgets with surpluses. So I think right now, economically, um, at this time, we have to obviously fund, be responsible in funding for education. We have to be responsible in funding for public safety. I like to put some more additional funding behind public safety because as you know, and as you mentioned, that seems to be the biggest issue that Milford faces as, as a city. Right. And that's something that everyone can speak to. I've knocked on several doors. You know, I've had several people that have brought it up to me and they've experienced you know crime firsthand so you know I'm willing to have the political courage to move forward and make sure that the police chief um, is has everything that he needs to become successful right because obviously I think we might have spoke about it last time you know the police department has trouble with retention keeping police officers Recruiting police officers, that's another challenge. I'd like to see if we can incentivize people to want to become 
police officers in Milford, and I think that um, we could certainly accomplish that. Yeah, uh, you know, I I think it was we discussed about how many exits there are in Milford. Yes, and you know we have a lot, and so the crime necessarily isn't internal to the city. It is a lot of exter- external, you know. I-95, people come off. I mean, I've had it in my own complex, you know, cars broken into, wheels taken right off, uh, the cars left on egg crates, you know, at four in the morning in the pouring rain. Uh, you know, where I live, you know, I talk to a lot of the neighbors and they have their concerns. You know, we talk about, you know, gating the community, but, you know, a lot of them are renters and, you know, the owners that don't live there don't want to pay the extra HOAs and, you know, it always comes down to money, you know, for, especially with stuff like that for the private sector. Mm-hmm. Um, but the public, you know, it, I almost feel it's an impossible task to, you know, you can't, you can't monitor all of this, but definitely, you know, with, you know, advancing in technology and cameras and security, you know, I think that's something we could look to in the future to really try to see what's going on out there because a lot of this is I, I literally got up and went golfing the next morning and the car across the way from me had no tires <laughs> just, I was sleeping <laughs> yeah. and I don't sleep I didn't hear it you know like it's 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 definitely a concern amongst a lot of people I know that so Milford's a big target for yeah. for that type of crime I mean you know people come in from out of town obviously it's easy on easy off we actually have eight exits yeah. off of you know, between 95 and the Merritt Parkway. So, you know, as your next mayor, I would like to work with the governor's office. I would like to call the governor, reach out to him, and see if we can have more resources on the 95 corridor, state police, and also on the uh, parkway, the Merritt Parkway corridor, because I feel like this is the um, entrance and the exit of these people coming in that commit these crimes. Right. And um, I think he would probably agree with me. And I would push back and, and, and hope that he would support us in that way. You know, this is a great city. Um, you know, we're not used to this influx of crime. I would also like to work with the state delegation, the state reps, the state senators, to see if they can possibly look at amending, in some respect, the police accountability bill. So the police officers um, have a little more flexibility. I think, um, you know, from what I'm being told, they're not allowed to chase, you know, and I agree that, you know, a chase would be probably, you know, put innocent people at risk. You know. at risk but I feel like, you know, um, <coughs> it's incentivizing these criminals right. in some respect. And we have to be aware of that. And we have to, um, you know, make adjustments along the way to um, better patrol. And I'm willing to put the resources. I'm willing to have the discussions with the police chief. I've always worked well with the police chief. I've advocated for four additional police officers. You know, originally when, when crime started to spike, the people on the other side of the aisle were very defiant. They didn't want to add it into the budget. And at that point in time, it would not have even raised our property taxes. Right. And that's what's really, you know, surprised yeah. me. And I wanted to be proactive. So now we have to not only solve the problem, but we have to play catch up. And, um, you know, it's putting us, you know, under, under unnecessary pressure. Now, when you become mayor, do you feel like you just said the property taxes, you know, where they were, we could afford it? Are we, did we miss that window? I would say yes, and that's a great point. And the reason being is the economy's changed since COVID. We have a lot of vacant office space, yeah. space buildings, as you know, which the property tax rate is predicated on, on the vacancy. Right. So these buildings are empty, and we're realizing less revenue. So... That's a challenge. And that's something else, you know, that I want to address as your next mayor is being creative and allowing some of these buildings to be used um, in a multi-purpose way, a mixed use way, so we can get them filled up right. and, 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 and realize that revenue because 
you know, we're in economic times where every dollar matters and fiscal accountability is the key. So I know what needs to be done and um, I've heard it from the people themselves and I'm ready to uh, get to work. Right, off the subject slightly, I went to the grocery store yesterday Mm -hmm. and I, you know, who hasn't noticed the prices and the inflation uh, on a national level and local. Uh, I, I literally bought a case of water, uh, maybe 10 items, $80. And I'm just like, this wasn't even me shopping. This was just picking up a couple things, you know, like, and I don't know, yesterday hit me differently. I'm like, 80 fucking dollars. What the, what are we, what are we even doing here? Mm-hmm. You know, and in the town of Milford, you know, it's affluent. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, kind of come and go, work in the city, uh, take the train, mm-hmm. don't necessarily really put back into this community. Um, they just kind of live here. You know what I mean? Um, and it's not the majority, but moving forward, trying to get more cops, trying to get, you know, uh, education and everything. Is it if we don't get the people to come in and live and or the office spaces and, and if we don't fill that up? What is like plan B? What is, is it raising taxes? And I know that's always the, you never say that when you're running for something, but Mm -hmm. you know, is that a logical next step or, or is it riding the storm out a little bit? Like, you know, it just, it can't keep going up. It has to level out. It has to go back down. Whether you're Democrat or Republican in the national eye, like something almost has to give. You know, but as a, you know, I don't want to call it a small town. Milford's pretty big, but as a mayor, uh, as mayor of Milford, you know, how would you how do you navigate that? I mean, it's 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 not a great time to jump in and say, oh, we got this surplus of money. Let's do this, 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 this. Like you said, you have to be creative. You have to work with the community. You know, I don't even know if this is a question. It's more of an observation. But no, it's it's. <coughs> I, I see the question within it, and and I appreciate it because that's where my business background comes in. Yep. To play, a thirty-five year business owner um, from my company. You have to promote and and you have to attract new business, but at the same time, I want to do a business outreach and retain the businesses that are here and see what their needs are and see how we can help them grow. Right. And, you know, the mall project, I'll speak to that sure. because that um, zone was just changed to mixed use to allow. So that was approved. It was approved by the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, Centennial Malls, it's a big national company. They own malls all over the country. So are they not Westfield anymore? Uh, no. no. So it's, it's under Centennial? Under new ownership. They're, they're willing to make a huge investment in Milford. But it's a new, it's a new mall of, of our time. It's, it's not the conventional you know, indoor mall. It's a hybrid. It's going to be half outside, half inside. It's going to have a walking trail. It's going to have kiosks. You know, it's going to have uh, restaurants. It may have a, a medical building. You know, I'm pushing, I would like to push for an entertainment venue. Um, there's going to be, you know, luxury apartments right. with 10% affordability. So people can live there. They can learn there. There could be an educational hub of a college, a community college. Um, you know, all these different things, you know, entertainment, all wrapped up into one. I think that's brilliant. I think that's what we need. It's in the right location. It's right off of 95. We have the parking. We have the the exit ramps, as you as you mentioned before. Um, you know, it's right off of Route One in ninety five. So I think it's a natural. Are these uh, properties succeeding countrywide, nationwide? I mean, uh, would we be one of the first to actually kind of implement something like this, or? Is, is there a roadmap to this? Is I mean, is there one out in Indiana? Is, I mean, is this... Cause I, this is something I never really researched. I've been following what's been going on. So I was at the meeting when they did the presentation. I saw the renderings, but there is data on it. It's, it's out in the Midwest. Um, it's very successful. Once again, you know, it's not just retail. Right. Okay, because we know that the Amazons affected a lot of these stores. We've actually lost, they made it a point when they did the presentation. I think it was 21 to 23 stores that left the mall. 
So we have to reinvent ourselves. And I think that's where the vision and the business background comes in because when we bring in that type of revenue, new revenue, tax revenue, that takes the pressure off of the homeowners, right. the people that have owned their houses here, the people that grew up here, the people that want to stay here like our seniors. It makes it more affordable because now <coughs> the tax base is shifting. So we have to you know, continue to grow our economic development and i think that's key how many uh how many housing units were they talking about so it was phase one it's 250 and once again these are you know all rentals no purchasing all rentals the demographic is you know 35 year old professional people a lot of seniors are downsizing they're selling their homes um they're making you know good good money on their houses they'd much rather rent um, it's an, it's easier living they want to be part of a community a walkable community such as the mall right. um, so you know there's different demographics it's not just um, you know young people it's it's a good mix of of, of different people and I think it's going to be bring a, a very positive culture to Milford what's the ETA on these so you know, it, I know that's a good I know point. we're in West Haven, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, some stuff it, it's a good point. <laughs> I, I wish it was happening sooner than later, but by the time they put the shovel in the yeah, ground, it's gonna be a yeah, it's going to be a couple of years out, I, I, I think. But um, you know, we have to plan, and that's the no, one thing no, about agree. coming from a business background. You're always planning ahead, planning for the future, and I and I know that I can bring that quality to the to the mayor's office right it, you know malls like you said with amazon and stuff uh we've seen a lot of you know businesses go out you know i'm sure rent is astronomical there we've seen restaurants go in and out a hundred times there uh you know now pf changs is coming in i believe yes uh the old knickerbockers but then it was something else after that i think yes louis bar louis or something I, I hope just as a as an outsider looking in that one obviously it works because it does create plenty of tax revenue for the town, but I envision you know I think the big box stores are kind of dead, you know. Agreed. Uh, you know, there's no Sears anymore. I mean, the Target's there, but you know, it's not. They don't even have employees there. You walk into Target to buy something, you're you know thirty deep in line waiting for a fucking automatic teller. Uh, you're on your own. You're on your own, you know? <laughs> or or it's, you know, 10 people sitting in their cars waiting for someone to bring it out to them. You know, the old, the post-COVID thing. I would love to see, like, all those apartments. And what's the place? Isn't there, like, a, a housing complex on Wheeler's Farm that's for, like, art, artsy people? I don't want to label it like that. But I, I remember when it was being built and it was... You're referring to the Muse. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. It's, it's that's something. It's a young vibe there. Right. They have but, a community room, a yeah. pool, I believe. You know, a rec room with you can exercise there. You can have a pool table. Yeah. You know these. You know when we talk about apartments, you know there's amenities attached. Right. So, like I said before, these are you know um, professional people. These are people. There's police officers, teachers, firemen. You know, gives them a place to start. You know where they can. Not only work in Milford, but live in Milford and right. afford to live there and then build up their nest egg and then eventually fall in love with Milford and decide to buy a home here. Yeah. I mean, that's really the turnaround that you want. And there's data to support that. So I think that it's going to pay dividends. I, I, I feel strongly about it. You know, the worst thing you could do, and I know you know this, is nothing. Right. Because that mall will close up and leave. It'll just and be vacant. I'd much rather see something like this than, to your point, a huge distribution center or, or one building like an Amazon. Right. You can just see an Amazon. You now, know? granted, they hire people and right. create jobs, but right. at the same but time. But that's not the best use right. of that land. Right. That's, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to value. You have to create value. So is is the subway property? Uh, today's the day they officially went to Shelton. Uh, is that just going to be another sore eye and on Bic Drive, or is that going to be occupied? Or it's been purchased. Oh, it there's okay. th there's a contract. Um, there's a local business in Milford that distributes foreign auto parts that's growing exponentially. 
like very fast. Yeah. Um, someone purchased it, an investor that's willing to put up a a, a big warehouse distribution center, um, allowing this business to stay in Milford. I talked about retention, retaining businesses. It's important. Um, so I think in that case, we spoke about the office space. It's antiquated. It's outdated. So right. what's the best purpose of that land? It's an industrial zone there. It sits in an industrial zone right off of uh, Big Drive or Subway yeah. Drive. Um, well, we have to rename it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, you know, it's it's something that um, is going to bring more tax revenue. It's a newer building. It's probably going to be state of the art. You know, these warehouses that they build now, they don't look like warehouses right right they're very tastefully done the landscaping is going to be top notch <coughs> and it's going to be for, far enough off the road and it, once again it's off 95 so it fits into the logistics parts of what milford offers you know business yeah i actually read this from uh susan who was the sister of the owner okay she was ceo for like three or four years back in the day right very nice lady Yes. She's out of it now, but yes. Uh, but yeah, she was uh, CEO of Subway for a few years back in the day. But there are some emotions there. I mean, it's, you know, it's it started here. It did. It did. And, you know, maybe someday, somewhere down the road, we can, you know, revisit them coming here, you know, in, in some respect. I, I would always leave that door open. Oh, sure. And, you know, I didn't know that they were leaving. I didn't even know or hear about that they were you know, even considering leaving. But that gets back to my business outreach. You know, you can't take any business that's in Milford today for granted. You have to communicate with your businesses because they may well be looking to leave. And maybe you can save that from happening or right. stop that from happening and right. say, hey, I didn't know you were looking to leave. Oh, well, you know, we're looking to go in a different direction, you know. Um, and that that would come up in a conversation and maybe through economic development we can find a better fit for them somewhere within the city if they're looking to move or we can help them you know expand so you know once again i i i think it's very important to be proactive yeah. in everything that you do especially you know running a city right i i always you know we'll, we'll move on from the subject in a second but i've always been you know, I've had many businesses on this show, and just off the top of my head, I think three are no longer in business. Wow. And two of them, actually, they were all in the restaurant world. Okay. Uh, and then I, I see where the, I'm not going to name anybody, but I see where the businesses are, and they're still empty. And a lot of the problems they couldn't stay was rent. Okay. You know, because rent is a big overhead that is not profitable it's it's you know like anything in life it's you pay to stay mm -hmm. and then i see these sitting just empty and vacant for you know a year two three do these landlords just have so much freaking money that they don't really give a shit or is it all tax write offable like why not you know work with your if you're a landlord i can understand about a renter for you know an apartment but for a business I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I've never been a landlord, so I don't know. I don't know the business side of that. But the common sense side to me tells me, wouldn't you rather lower the rent by three hundred a month over the next three years mm -hmm. instead of it being vacant vacant for two mm -hmm. and you lose all of that revenue? Or am I just that's not how the world works? Well, you know, coming from a family business background, I mean, through my experience, that's how I work. You know, I want to make it flexible and easy. I want people to, to succeed in Milford. Right. So if it's a matter of me, you know, having to lower something to keep the business viable, you know, I see the benefit in that. And I know landlords that do just that. And those are probably some of the landlords that are from the area that understand, you know, Milford <coughs> is a very diverse community. It's, it's, it's a blue-collar community at heart. Um, there's a lot of people that, that, you know, live paycheck to paycheck. And some of these businesses, you know, um, are struggling. 
like like everybody else. Just because you own a business doesn't mean that it's it's easy or, or you have a leg up. I mean, right. it, it's a sacrifice. And I know a lot of people have kept the doors open as long as they possibly could in order to wait or or or, or hope that the market turns around. I think to your point, we're in the middle of a market correction right now with some of these spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the financing is attached to them, but you know, there's a lot of properties that are owned by corporations and sometimes they will write it out or sometimes um, they'll just let it go, you know, and it'll end up in foreclosure and that brings up other opportunities. Right. But I would like to take an inventory of these properties that, that you're referring to, whether right. it's an empty restaurant or an empty store, and, and reach out once again and see what's yeah. going on. What is it? Are you... Are you asking for too much rent? Why isn't this being rented? Are you getting calls? Can we help and assist through economic development to find a use for that property? Or can we entertain maybe changing the use of the property in order to attract something else to get it, you know, up and running so it's working? Right. And, it's, and you know, I, it's, it's, it's tragic to see, you know, because yeah. people, people that own small businesses, that's all they do. You know, it's a it's a twenty four seven job. It is, know? it is, and you know, I, I, I've done it. I've, you know, you work in your business. Right. You know, they, it's not just something that you own like a car. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you work <laughs> it every day and, and take it in for a and, and, and you have to appreciate it. And and that's why I feel strongly about you know, local business, family owned business. Um, you know, even even the big businesses that come in and, and, and invest in Milford. You know, um, I, I try to support the whole community and, you know, because together collectively is, is what makes us stronger. Yeah. So we have to have, you know, all of these um, different different types of businesses in order to attract people to come to Milford. You know, yeah. people complain about the traffic, too. Oh, yeah. But it's funny through my campaigning, you know, if I'm in a restaurant and I'm sitting next to someone, I'll just randomly ask them, are you from Milford? And they're not. Right. They're from Orange, and you know this, yeah. from Tending Bar. Yeah. They're from Stratford. They're from West Haven, right? We want those people to come here to support our business. So I, I'm like you in the sense I'm a little mini mayor, uh, <laughs> and, and I'll explain why. So like, this has happened probably three or four times in the last five years in Milford, me bartending. Uh, I get a lot of people from New York, Long Island, up to up you know up in Rhode Island and they come in and I wait on them and they ask me about the town and I like you can ask anyone I work with I, I am like I love this town uh, it's got everything you need you know I tend to stay away from the post road unless I need to go to the mall or I need to you know go to Kew Gardens or mm -hmm. something on there that I need something from I put everything's attainable everything you need in Milford mm -hmm. you, have, you know you got beaches and major hotels and a, 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 you could walk to a train station and get to two different major cities, three really. And I've had f for sure three couples that have come back to me within six months and told me that they bought in Milford because of what I said to them. And I didn't remember who the fuck they were. <laughs> and then to be like, oh well, you were we had this, you were our waiter, you know, in the winter time. I'm like. You know, and I'm like, listen, I see a gazillion freaking people and I probably lie to half of them about how my day is going. <laughs> you know, that's how the job is. But like, and then I would start to remember who they were because they told me where they were from. And, right, right. And, uh, and it just happened this past summer. A lady was in town and she was with her daughter and she was from California and she ordered two lobster rolls to go. And then the seven minutes I had to talk to her, I convinced her. And gave her a number of a of a you know real estate person in Milford that could really help her out, and mm -hmm. she came back a month ago and said, "I bought down by the beach. I love it. You know, thank you so much." And you know, it really is. A, it's a it's a great town, and you know, I, if, if if you listen to my show all the time, I'm always talking about Milford. Uh, I love it, and well, that's something to be proud of. Mm. You know, to, to to promote your community and 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 where you live and sharing your experiences firsthand you know and that's you know something that you know right. i i appreciate 
you know that that you've always done and and that's why i'm here today because I, i'm a fan of yours and you've always kept it real and positive you know even when you're working you know yeah and you're just talking to people you know and i'm the same way i like to share you know things that excite me and milford is an exciting place i yeah. mean and and you know some There's people don't know the potential you know and and we're like right on the cusp i mean we could do some really great things here you know we have the resources to do them you know we have um the people that want to see you know see it get better and become easier and more accessible so you know there's a lot of work that's going to yeah. go into it but we're going to get there and i'm confident in, in doing that we were just talking about traffic and all that uh you know how how can we improve our transportation infrastructure here uh you know downtown's downtown i mean a lot of downtowns have that mm -hmm. problem especially around mm -hmm. in the morning or at rush hour and stuff uh i've learned how to get around downtown mm -hmm. you know because i've lived here for so long sure sure and yeah. even when i go to work i don't go i don't go buy it i go down and around and i you know we park behind the post office you know so i know my little ways to get around downtown but you know, it's not just downtown that has the traffic problems, but, you know, I'm no traffic guy. I just mm -hmm. know know how to get around stuff. But what are some plans or, you know? So ideas, right? Every, right. Everything starts with an idea. Mm -hmm. Through my tenure on the Board of Aldermen, obviously, we facilitate grants and we've always supported the Connecticut Transit, which does a great and amazing job on the bus lines. And a lot of these up newer apartments that I'm sure we're going to talk about um, are on bus lines for a reason um, because people, the younger people, are are more apt to use public transportation. You know, the Ubers, mm -hmm. um, the buses, the train you mentioned, you know, people will come from Fairfield to Milford to spend the night and they'll take the train here. But what's interesting to me is all of us that live in you know the neighborhoods why not think about getting smaller buses into the neighborhoods you know the very you know like the lexington green right and, and bayview if, beach if, yeah and, and 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 shuttle the people downtown so if there's a bunch of people that are all friends hey let's go out and nobody wants to drive and nobody right. has to drive right. and and looking at that uh, and that's a small, quick run that can be done. And it could be just maybe on the weekends. I'm not saying every day, but maybe in the summertime, maybe right. just certain times of the year. <coughs> um, and and be able to fund that and, and, and have people really, truly use it and, and, and get some of the downtown traffic, you know, away from Milford. Because New Haven Ave, like you said, is used because people don't want to go to the post road because they right. live in Milford and they know better. Right, but right, now right. you see New Haven Ave. I could tell you, coming into the center of town on certain days, you know, a Thursday, a Friday if after I, work. If I got to get to work on a Friday at four, what should take mm -hmm. me three minutes is probably fifteen twenty. Mm -hmm. Just just New Haven Ave coming in. You know, I don't break off of it until uh, until uh, what am I golf? golf. Yeah, that's when I break off and then I go around. And, you know, doing these little shuttles and maybe a different type of bus, maybe something that's a little more, you know, um, you know, something cool, something that's, you know, a little more hip. Right. You know, to entice people to, to, to use public transportation and, and educate people. And so what I you're think saying is a, is a local, you know, resident only downtown Milford bus you know, stops in Lexington Drain. You know, maybe you know, or not just for the instance, beach communities, right. the beach communities that want to go downtown for the night. Right. The, the bus picks you up at a certain time. Uh, you know, then it, it brings you back at a Last certain one time. Is, you know, one in the morning. After that, you're on your own. Get an Uber, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if or two, whatever, whatever you want to call. Why it. not? Right. Why not? Why not have the conversation? Why not form a committee? Why not look into something like that? Yeah. You know, and it brings the community closer. Would it be because free? It, well, it, it it would probably have to be funded through. Well, well, I know that, but taxpayer would it be money free for me to hop on it, not back. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I could see that. You know, and maybe just seasonal, just you know, depending on what's happening. Um, 
you know, maybe for the Oyster Festival, maybe the people that want to go to the Oyster Festival, like myself, I, I live in North Milford. I have to drive downtown. I have to find somewhere to park to go to the Oyster right. Fest. Right. Maybe for that one day. Let's just start with something yeah. and see how it works. See how it works. Maybe that one day, you know, there's something that we can, you know, use to get people to the Oyster Festival without having to worry about St. Patrick's Day Parade. Or, exactly. Or pay to park or, or worry about where they're going to park. You know, that's all. Yeah. It's very simple. I, you know, I've learned, too, that sometimes people overthink things. Let's just try something. Let's just, you know, take the first step. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I think you're auctioning right. the bus off to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you just never know. You no, just know. you, you just know never know. Track. And these things evolve. And and listen, if it's going to help with you know keeping cars off the road with less traffic, and you know nobody likes to be in traffic. It's frustrating. Yeah. You know, I'll be the first to admit that. You know, um, especially if you don't live far away, you're in town, but you're trying to get downtown. It's, so uh, yeah, no, I. I I, my brother lives up in South Deerfield. Well, he lives in Greenfield, and if I lives in South Deerfield, I was up there like a week and a half ago, and, you know, up there, <laughs> it just float around. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's no traffic. And I'm leaving. I'm coming home, and I just looked at my brother. I said, you know, I, I could never live up here. There's not enough hustle and bustle for me. I, don't, I never want to live in a city, right. but I don't want to live in the boondocks either. Right. That's what I love about Milford. Oh, it's perfect. And I'm like, I do envy your traffic, though, because you don't have any. <laughs> like, they're just, yeah. you know, in and out. And then, sure enough, I hit Springfield, Mass, and then stuck in traffic, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's always ideas. There's always. Hey, you go to Boston, they have a T. Yep. Right? Yep. I mean, I'm not saying have a T all the time, but if you had some type of transportation that went through the neighborhoods, like a trolley, you know, certain times of the year, yeah. you know, in the summer months, because that's when a lot of out-of-towners come in. Memorial Day to Labor Day. Right. And if we can, you know, um, help move people around in our community um, in that fashion, I, I think it's fun. You know, I think people would, would probably enjoy it every once in a while. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd take it just, just to take it. Sure. You know. Uh, so we were talking about housing with the mall. Affordable housing in Milford. Mm-hmm. First, can you explain what affordable housing means? Because I go on the site, you know you live in Milford. Right. And I don't want to call people ignorant, but I think a lot of people take the term the wrong way. Yes. Uh, so what is the, you know, layman's terms definition of affordable housing? So I don't know why this happened, but afford- affordable housing mm-hmm. got a bad name. Right. You know, we talk about affordable insurance we talk about affordable health insurance we talk about you know affordable affordable dinner (laughs) yeah uh, affordable (laughs) pharmaceuticals affordable energy and then when it comes to housing everybody panics so i think they think it's section eight it's not it's not it's not. It's affordable. It's, you know... Which there's nothing wrong with that either. But. No. What, what it does is it introduces the people that are w- the working people, like I mentioned earlier, and it gives them an opportunity to live in the same town or the same city that they work in that maybe they couldn't afford to live here and they'd have to live outside of Milford. Let's take New Haven, for example. Right. And then they have to worry about transportation to getting to work and it brings them in the community it makes them part of the community and it's based on on income mm-hmm. it's based on income so affordable affordable can can mean a different you know type of you know sliding scale depending on what people make right so we know firsthand that apartments in Milford especially downtown the newer ones tend to be pricey. They they're over two thousand dollars a month for a one bedroom. They could be twenty one hundred. Right. So affordable in this respect, you know, specific to Milford right now, based on the market, could be probably, I would imagine, you know, a few hundred dollars less. Right. Which makes a big difference in somebody's life. Sure. I mean, that could be the car payment, right? That could be, you know, the savings. You know that you could realize by living in an affordable apartment. 
And what people need to understand is these buildings and these projects, you know, will only allow a certain percentage. Right. Well, isn't each town required? They are uh, by state. I, what is it? Ten percent or less? It's less. Well, the one that was just passed at the mall is was passed at ten percent. But I can tell you, there was a lot of. Um, People that wanted to see that get increased to 15 or even 20 percent to open up more units right and that's a conversation that we could probably have moving forward this is phase one 250 apartments 10 percent but that percentage you know doesn't necessarily mean it it, it, it it could change it could be increased you know there could be a conversation depending on you know now is that percentage per unit or per town I mean, per like you know, per, like, like per building. building, per building. Okay. Yeah. So ten percent of the two two hundred and fifty so units approved. Ten units, one unit has to be affordable. Right. By. Law. Right. So each building, <coughs> depending on the amount of units, it would it would differ. Now I've seen some affordable housing pricing in Milford. Okay. It well, doesn't seem that affordable. Rental. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> no. No. It's. Uh, once again, I mean, you know, it's people that are starting out. It's professional people, people out of college that just get a job in the city and they're making a decent wage and they can't afford to live in New York. So they right. take the train and they live in Milford. They live right in the TOD district, right downtown. They get off the train and they walk in, into their apartment. Right. I mean, and those are probably a lot of your customers that you probably see. A lot of them live downtown, yeah. 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 And, and they're younger, like yeah. you said. So, you know, we are always evolving. You have to embrace change. You have to, you know, just plan ahead. You have to do your homework. Everything's data driven, you know, and you just have to have responsible development. And as long as it's, um, you know, there for the best of of the community, you know, it it will it will bring prosperity. Now, how, now, when you were mayor, how do you? How do you engage the community so, you know, their voices are heard in certain events or, or decision-making processes of mayor? Um, I know it's a tough job and you can't please everybody, especially in the, you know, the world we live in now and mm-hmm. everyone, you know, we have a boating community, we have a, you know, we have a you know, business community, we mm-hmm. have, and everyone has personal interests and stuff. How do you feel you can, you know, reach each individual um, I know it's impossible to sit down with everybody, but mm-hmm. you know, in a broader spectrum, right? You know, make sure that the this you know the tax paying citizens of Milford feel like they're you know they've been heard and understand. Well, I've gained a lot of that knowledge being a sitting alderman and answering to my constituents through the years for different concerns that they may have, you know, in regards to some of the subjects that we've talked about, right. whether it's crime development, overdevelopment, education. So it's an open door policy. You're the representative of over 50,000 people, regardless of whether they own a business or not, regardless Mm -hmm. if they rent or they own a home. I think the people of Milford have an understanding that Milford as a community, you know, looks out for each other. So it's something, you know, that you have to do day in and day out. You have to make sure that the decisions that are made through collaboration, through forming a committee, from people coming to the Board of Aldermen meetings and speaking at the public hearing and voicing their concerns, you know, what's happening in their neighborhood or what's changed in their neighborhood or what could be approved upon in their neighborhood. That's where you have to be a great listener. And I've always... You know, listen to people, collaborate with people, and you'll always find a middle ground. I can tell you we've come a long way. We've had great success um, throughout the city, throughout whether the, the mayor, from one mayor to the next. I think people see that in the people that they elect for these positions. I'm confident in Milford. I'm confident that they look to people that have the experience, that can offer, you know, their time, that that are great listeners. You know, I think that we've been blessed with with great public servants in our city 
And I want to continue in that tradition and always being a public servant. Right. Not a politician, a public servant. <coughs> and that's the key, you know, to keep that mindset. I grew up here. I'm a humble guy. You know, I, I, I appreciate everyone's, you know, hardships. I listen to their hardships. And I, I try to help people. And, and I think, you know, if you're honest and, and you put your best foot forward, you know, you can, you know, find find that solution to most problems. Yeah. And one thing I know, uh, this is really just the second time we've sat down and chatted. Yes. Is uh, you are running a very clean campaign. Uh, you're running, you know, you're not attacking anybody. Uh, and I, I think that's very commendable. Thank you. Uh, I have received text messages on the contrary mm-hmm. from other parties. <laughs> yeah. I'll just leave it at that. And I think it's, uh, you know, this is just me talking, not you. Uh, I think it's, it's disheartening. Uh, I actually feel it's counterproductive. Uh, I think it's actually uh, in your favor when people see these mm-hmm. text messages that I've, I've been getting. And... Uh, and the one thing I'll leave it on this note is I love how they still leave the option at the end of these messages to hit one or six on who you're going to vote for. Mm-hmm. And just so you know, you're six. <laughs> that hits six. <laughs> <coughs> but we won't go into any more of that. Yeah. But, you know, um, I but, appreciate but, you, yeah. you know, r- um, bringing that to light. I can tell you, you know, I'm very proud of my public service. I'm proud that I come from a, a family business background. You know, I'm, I'm a product of Milford, right? right I right. mean, I went through the public school system. My parents moved here to start businesses. Yeah. That was the American dream. That was their dream. And, and Milford offered the opportunity. And, you know, I've contributed to my family business, you know, with my brothers. And, you know, that's something that I think... If, if anyone had to experience what I've experienced, it's it's all positive. Yeah. You know, and I, I truly believe in positivity and putting positive vibes out in society, out in a community, especially if, if you want a job and you want to represent yourself as a leader, there's no room for, for negativity. There yeah. really isn't. And, you know, um, that's never happened in Milford before, you know, and it's unfortunate that that it's happening now but i i have my the high road is always the right road well you know i i i trust the people in milford i i trust the voters i i I have faith in them and i i know that they truly you know um believe in a positive milford and i think that come election day their voices will be heard i believe they will too you know what one thing I always learned in my, I think it was, I was working in the Marriott, one of my first management jobs. I was really young. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a good lesson in life was like my first day on the job, I was just bartending and then I got promoted to be a manager. My manager above me always says, you know, when you come into a new job, have fresh eyes, mm-hmm. you know, and basically what that means is, you know, there might be. You know, Joe, who's been managing the restaurant for six years, who walked by the same dirty table and it just became just that's what it was. The dirty the table. The dirty table, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. You know, and fresh eyes come in and yes. why is this table dirty or a window, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, you know, like why is it, why is this dirty? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I feel you were talking about visions and trying new things and. And, you know, just the, the bus idea and all that, I, I think is, you know, what a, what a town, and I'm not saying this town is stagnant at all. I'm not saying they're set in their ways, but fresh eyes, someone that knows the mm-hmm. community very well, I think is, you know, just don't go old hat. Don't vote the row you vote because that's what you've always been doing. Mm-hmm. Listen. Right. Listen to what Tony's saying, uh, you know, and, and, and make your decision that way. You know, uh, just don't vote party lines. I mean, I know I'm Republican, and yes, I'm voting for Tony, but I've never sat down with the, your, the person running against you. I've never seen her say anything, um, and I'm not. I'm sure she's very intelligent. I'm sure mm-hmm. she knows. You know, she's been in the public sector for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I formed my opinion right. through your actions, uh, through sitting with me here, through your fundraisers. 
Um, and I'm sure you still got a couple left before the big day. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of you taking initiative as a business owner. You could just sit back and be like, you know, I'm a business owner. I'm getting older. I don't need this. But right. yet here you are. And because you love this town. Absolutely. You know, and uh, and I know a lot of people that love you and appreciate a lot. I know Thank a lot of, you. I know a lot of small business owners. Thank you. Uh, that support you and stick up for you. And, uh, and uh I think it'll have a good outcome next in well, two Tuesdays. Well, thank you. I mean, just what you said, that's what inspires me. Yeah. I get inspired by my friends, my family, you know, people that have known me, that grew up with me. Um, and and that's really the enjoyment that I get out of public service, you know. Right. Um, and I, I don't have all the ideas, but I have some pretty good ones. Yeah. But I can tell you, I'm, I'm very open-minded to, to new ideas, to people making suggestions. I've learned from people, you know. That I mean, makes the best leaders. And There's a team under you. and Well, thank you. And, yeah. and, and there's great people in this city yeah. that, that work, you know, day in and day out for the best interests of the community. And I want to inspire them. I want them to um, feel good about going to work and feel good about what they're doing, you know, and build people up. Right. You know, and at the same time, you know, we all share in the success. And this is something I think the timing is right. I, I think people truly want to be inspired. You know, people don't want negative vibes. They don't want negative messaging in their lives. There's just too much information out there to begin with. Yeah. And when you start going down that road, it's, it's, it's not the road to success. You know, we all approach things differently, and I can tell you in my life, being true to myself, being honest with people has paid dividends, and, and, and that's who I am, you know, and I, I, I'm a strong believer in that. You know, what you put into something is what you get out of it, and I've volunteered, you know, 20 years of public service. It was four years on the zoning board, 16 on the board of aldermen, and at the same time, built a family business. You know, with the help of my family, my brothers, my father, you know, my mother owns a business in town. Uh, she's a hairdresser. I mean, it just goes on and on. And, you know, we've always, you know, supported each other. And, and I want to support the community. I, I want I want to continue that that support and that hard work as 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 your yeah, mayor. I, I, uh, I see the passion in your eyes. Uh, I Thank know you. this is something that you really want. And, uh, you know, the best of luck to you. I will be there. Where do I vote? Oh, I vote at foreign. I'll All be right. at foreign. What time are you going to be at foreign? So I could. I could uh, so sometimes I, I have to wait for my girlfriend. I'll probably be there early. Foreign yeah. high is a big polling place. Yes, it is, yeah. I'll probably <coughs> go there first and go to Harborside, Orange Ave. Those three are the top three. Um, so we're doing a lot of signage, you yeah. know, which getting the message out. I got this LED sign. Oh, nice. Yeah, we can move it around. We 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 have it now. We're gonna have it in different locations. So is it like a like a truck kind of thing with a billboard on the back, or is it? It's not a truck, but it's like a, a trailer. Yeah. With with the LED billboard, so we've you know reserved it from we had it yesterday and right up until election day so if you know the people that are listening they can very well see it yeah. you know around town we're going to move it strategically we're going to try to cover all the ground and i gotta look for it for a selfie yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's really cool our headquarters is on the corner of north street and the post road across yeah, from I just pa drove by the other day yeah. yeah patriot bank it yeah. was there last night where's yeah. election night for you there um, we're probably going to go to the Kimberly. Um, we'll be there during the day, but uh, we're going to have uh, we need a bigger space mm -hmm. for the night. So you know we um, we're hoping that it's going to be a, a big win for Milford. Yeah. And uh, we, we're inviting people to come. You know, nice. come, hopefully have a, a good celebration. Uh, since you're the man with ideas, I got one last question for you, and I'll let you go. So this is more of a national problem, and it's hit home for me. Uh, my father, he's 80 and long story short, he's basically being scammed online. And <clears throat> I went up last Saturday to rectify the situation. He lives up in, you know, South Deerfield, Mass. So he's, you know, an hour and a half away from me. My brother lives close, but you know, he's struggling trying to get through to my dad as well. Basically, you know, he's being asked online for money and he's confused 
Uh, like mm-hmm. I said, he's lived by himself for probably 20 years. A little lonely, I would guess. He doesn't listen to the show, so I really don't care what I say about him. <laughs> but, Dad, I love you. I mean it. But, you know, he's in for, you know, a couple grand. Uh, he doesn't know who he's talking to. He thinks he knows who he's talking to. He's never met anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, we took his phone. We took his Facebook down. Uh, actually, we didn't fully take his phone. We wanted him to change his phone number. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, where I'm going with this is awareness. Um, I know I did read some stuff in Milford. You know, I know the police will come out with something like, you know, there's a new scam out there, right. whether it's an eBay scam or something or, you know, this is just a week ago and I deleted every contact he had in his phone and blocked him and he's still getting them. And, you know, I did my own research, figured out it was people from probably Nigeria that wow. are pretending to be people locally in Massachusetts that, you know, have a daughter that needs an inhaler or, you know, something. Right. And he's falling, you know, hook, line, and sinker for this. So my one question would be, I know Milford's very good for adult, uh, you know, they have the, the classes for adults, you know, through the, the community. Okay. You know, they go learn how to sew or knit or yes. navigate the internet. Right. And, and then I see these progressive commercials, you know, the ones where the guy's like, don't become your parents. And yes. there's one about, like, Facebook and DMing and all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I just would love more, Oh, you know, and I feel my father's past the point of no return with this stuff unless we just literally treat him like a baby and take everything away from him. Yeah. But I think, you know, we need some kind of awareness because it's only going to get worse with AI. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. you will not be able to, this could be all made up right here in about two years. Wow. You know, and I think, you know, the bad people are always going to be bad. And they're going to try to take advantage. And the elderly are the easiest ones because they didn't grow up with this technology. Yeah. Uh, my dad's only been on Facebook for a couple of years. He does not know how to navigate it. He doesn't know the pitfalls of it. And just yesterday, I got an Instagram message uh, for somebody pretending to be somebody I know in Milford who's a business owner wow. that doesn't have an Instagram account, which literally raised... I don't, I don't remember them having an Instagram account. And they were asking me for $100 to help them out with their children. And went on so far, like, I, I laugh it off. I actually text the person, I'm like, yo, you've been hacked. You know, like, I get it. Right, right. How do we get, I wish, you know, anyone that just, it's almost like having a driver's license. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can't, if you can't navigate this or understand really what's going on, you shouldn't have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, you know, if, if, you know, like I said, my father's lost some money. Yeah. And it's. You know, we're, we're resorting to law enforcement now, but what are they going to do? You know, um, again, it's not really a question. It's more of like, it's you, what ideas would you have? And I think, you know, obviously is education would be the first. Right. But as people get older, you know, maybe senile or dementia sets in. It's just that's what these people go after. And it's sad. But yeah. they're winning. They're winning. Right, right. And so, how do we win this battle? So... I don't mean it for the town of Milford. No, you know no, but, I, you know, I appreciate you sharing that story. That's a personal story, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, I know it's your dad, so yeah. it, it hits home. I talked to my brother about it yesterday. I said, you yeah. already mentioned this. He goes, we have to. And it's upsetting. It is. But you trying to be proactive in, 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 in the sense that putting it out there to make other people aware of what's happening. Like like myself, right? We have aging parents. Mm-hmm. So we And, you know, it's funny because they said... Uh, one of the specific data measures that came out, I went to a Board of Ed education meeting last night and they did a presentation. We have a growing 55 and older um, community at Milford. So, you know, people are retiring here, you know, the elderly people. We have magnificent um, facilities for seniors. So I guess, you know, having the conversation with with your family with the elderly people whether it's your grandparents or or your parents in in your mm-hmm. um in your situation and it's hard because you don't want to take their phone away because then they feel like they lost their independence you know um because you know they're older and uh you know it's it's such a difficult thing because he, he, to he go got through mad. it got yeah to go through it like with somebody that you love right. and you know i would love to talk to the police chief about it to see if there is some way to reach out 
to these people specifically, you know, to be preventative. Almost have a day for it. You know, like just a, you know, it's a national. Could be. You know, whether it's, you know, scamming, catfishing, whatever. So, you know, the national navigating the internet day, like, or just, you know, you know, for some people, it's so simple. If somebody is asking you for money yeah. on any of these sites, it's right. a scam. Ninety-nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's a crime. It's it, right. It's a crime. So that's why you know my first reaction is to reach out to the police department to right. see how they would bring the awareness and the education piece to the elderly, and then maybe partner with the senior center and do some kind of senior prevention council. You know, we do have committees that are set up for seniors, and maybe as your sitting mayor taking some initiative with this right being that this is something you know that you're bringing to light and most people hopefully don't have that negative experience right you know where it affects their loved ones and putting it out there so they can educate the seniors and their families at the same time right. educate the families on how to approach their parents right or just check up on them or have someone come in and speak to the seniors at the senior center while they're there right. during the day. And right. like to your point, making a day of it. Right. And whether it could be a police officer. Yeah. You know, or it could be a victim. It could be a victim. Or right. it could be yourself saying, hey, this happened to my dad. You know, my dad's on a fixed income. Right. You know, he's a, a great, um, big hearted heart. man. Yep. And they take advantage of that. And that's really the sadness in it all. It really is. And, and, and the people that become victims, they're almost ashamed. Yeah. And they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And, and you know, they don't want to share that experience. But if they share it in the right venue and they help it from not happening to someone else, that's the reward. Right. So... I would I certainly, that. I would certainly make it part of my conversation with seniors, you know, when I'm in front of you know people to make them aware of it, and um, you know, I, I I think that that's you know something that needs to be talked about. I mean, because it's happening in real time, mm-hmm. you know. It ain't gonna get any better. No, 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 no. and you know, um, having open you know dialogue is, yeah. is is the first step. All right, one last thing. This yes, has sir. Been annoying me. Okay. <laughs> you know you live in Milford. I don't know who the admins are. Right. But I subject a, or uh, submit a lot of my shows that support local business. Okay. In Milford. Right. I submit the the podcast on it. Deep. They've done they've done a couple over the three years I've been doing this almost. But they didn't do last week's. They didn't do a couple of a month ago, and I'm going to submit yours, and. You know, if it, it, it's it's their prerogative, they can do what they want. But some of the shit that I see that gets fucking posted on there and becomes just a firestorm of you know how bad the internet can be. Right. You know. So this is nothing to you. This is no. me ranting. Right. Put this fucking show on the air, please. <laughs> like I want people in Milford to know that you sat down with me that don't know me that you know like they could, there's a lot of members on you know you live in Milford on Facebook. Okay. <clears throat> So just just help me to understand a little a little more clear. So there's a site called you know you live in Milford, right? And people can post like, hey, we're, uh, who what you know who recommends Chinese? You know what Chinese restaurant do you recommend? They won't allow you to post. I, well, I don't know. They don't haven't approved it. So I did one with uh, Jordan, this kid Jordan last week who owns the boxing ring over by the police department. Right. You know, small business owner just started out. Wanted to, you know, I, he's getting traction through my show and through his own promotion. And this is just extra, you know. Even if it hits one person, that you know what, I, I didn't like the boxing place over here. Or maybe I'll try the boxing place over there. You know? I don't know who censors <coughs> that. Or I don't know either. I, that's a great question because I don't know. I just figured that it was a community right. and of th- people, and and everything that was put on there was, you know. Maybe I have a bad rep. I don't know. <laughs> I really um, don't know. <coughs> I, I. But is there anything like in your personal opinion that we? Well, we. I will certainly promote it on my oh, end. Of course, through, yeah, through yeah. my website. This is just me griping. Yeah, that's all. Um, I'm not sure how that works or how it was set up originally. I don't think that the city has any. Our, but our last show got through. It did. Right. So I only I only send shows in that are that are you know relevant to Milford. 
Okay. Because I'll do shows like, you know, I did one with, you know, Steve Phillips from the Mets and we just talked baseball. Whatever. I didn't submit that one. But you, business owners in Milford, mm -hmm. I just wish they would all go through. Even if they want to listen to the show and just make sure. Do you think that they're watching it and no, then deciding? I don't think oh. so. I don't think so. I just think, I, like, like I said, I see some of the stuff that comes through on the site. And like now, like half the people post anonymously instead of putting their name to something. Right. And I don't know. It's more of a, I just laugh about is it, it. Is it most recently or is this My always been the way? My episode Friday haven't been posted yet. With Do you think there's been a change of who's... I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe somebody's, uh, you know... I just, you know, there's, there's a couple sites. I just, I just feel, you know... My love for the town. Yeah. And when I have someone on locally, I would like to broaden the horizons of people. You know, I don't have a gazillion followers on my sites, you know, so I figured, you know, with 20,000 members of that community. Absolutely. Even if 10 people listened and, and one people, one person wanted to go box, then th there we go. Well, you know, for an example, if you didn't reach out to me. Right. You know, I... I you know, I wouldn't be aware of, you know, yeah. the, the things and the conversations that you've had, right. you know, about the community. I think anything that has to do with Milford would, would be allowable, right? you know, on that site because it's specific to Milford, right? right. Uh, you. you know, and the people here at this table, you and I, we're, we're both here and yeah. we're, we're fighting the good fight, That's it. you know, and we want to make things better for everyone. Yeah. So, um I, would I mean, maybe it just gets overlooked. I don't have any qualms with them. I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's just a link. It's all I'm posting. Right. It's a link to the show, and that's it. And, and then it's like they decide. It's not like I'm yes or no. You don't even know if you get declined. It may just be sitting in, you know, they the just, internet space. And you think they, they just swipe just, it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a Tinder date. Well, <laughs> they're just swiping <laughs> left on me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, I'm glad that, you know, you mentioned that to me because I will certainly, um, you know, look into it. Oh, I got some, I, I got some channels. I, I don't even people. know. You know. Honestly, I don't I don't even know who I would approach. Like, I don't know who's behind the curtain. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you kind of research the page and see who the admins are and all that. I, I don't have time for that shit. I just throw it on there. I'm like, you know, this is local. Listen, this is local. I appreciate you. You're a real guy. Thank you, you know, man. and and I, I, I just you know connect with you, you know, on on, on a real level. And, yeah, for sure. And I like what you're doing. And I told you this last time. Yep. You know, you're a fan of mine, and I'm a fan of yours. Absolutely. You know, and and we're kind of like in this thing together. And I I, I look forward to coming back here yeah. as as mayor and to talk to you about the issues that Let's you're hearing about or things that mm -hmm. are happening to you personally whether it's you or your family mm -hmm. i mean these are the things that you know are interest me and, and the things that i deeply care about yeah, real, real talk real people um and real time real time <laughs> ah, real quickly yeah uh my owner richie conine yeah want to extend an invitation to you saturday at stonebridge i think we have a 5k zombie run finishing there okay with the rum runners playing the weather's supposed to be 75 and beautiful let's do it uh so he, he just he knew i was talking to him last night i said tony's coming on the show oh yeah invite him down saturday it's gonna be great it's kind of our last patio day too oh with the okay. season coming to an end and uh for you finish up on this what do you have any fundraisers last minute coming up no, I, no. I, I honestly, I don't. I'm doing meet and greets at people's yep. houses. People are opening up their living rooms to me. Oh, nice. Um, which is very, very, um, you know, great in, yeah. in a sense. I get to meet the neighbors and, and friends of friends. Um, and so I, I enjoy doing those. I've done, you know, a host of fundraisers throughout the campaign. We had a great time. You know, we did one at, at Stonebridge. You were away. Yeah, I was. But we yeah. had the U2 Nation. Yeah band there which was a big hit you know and you know i want people to um you know enjoy themselves you know when they come and you know we've had a blast i've got a great um campaign committee they support me they do all the work i so you got uh maxi max one of the kids from stonebridge I see yeah. some of the pictures. Yeah, yeah. They're down, they're down in Bayview. Yes. Yeah. He's got, yes. The, he's got the big curly blonde hair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The knee brace. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, was, I was busting his balls the other day. You know, speaking of Bayview, 
I walked in that um, 4th of July parade. I know. You threw me a Tootsie Roll, I think. Did I? Yeah, but that's a great community. <laughs> oh, it's awesome down there. Um, I, well, I'm waiting for the house prices to come down so I can move back into it. To people be love, I got to tell you, people love Bayview. <coughs> um, and and it's it's just, it's one of those beach communities yeah. that, you know, has so much history, mm-hmm. so many families I've met. Yeah. You know, I, I really enjoy spending time down at Bayview. Yeah, it's awesome down there. All right, Tony G, two weeks Go vote. Um, I can't harp on it enough. You know, when I was younger, I, I kind of, I feel like the young kids nowadays vote more than when we were younger. I got to tell you, a lot of young people have come to headquarters, asked for signs, asked to volunteer. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, they're really engaged in, 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 in their beliefs, right. you know, and it's inspiring to me. And, you know, I hope that they get inspired. And I always tell them, you know, you could do this. You could become a public servant. You right. could, you know, serve on a board and commission. And, and who knows, maybe maybe one day you'll be the next mayor. Right. You know, and, and that's how it starts. I mean, it starts at a grassroots level. We got some new signs coming out. You'll see well, them soon. I, I need one. It's going to be, um, it's going to be vote row B for Tony G. I like it. So yeah. I need you to come out and support the team. Now, can we go down to headquarters? What are the hours of headquarters? So headquarters, mostly we're there on the weekends, but we'll be there Thursday night. We have a meeting there Thursday night at 7 o'clock. The doors will be open. It's a public meeting. People could come in. Um, they could actually sit in on the meeting. They could see how we um, you know, address our town committee. Um, the volunteers will be there. So... Um, I would say if, you, if you're not doing nothing Thursday night, stop by. Maybe the big LED sign will be there. <laughs> um, you can't miss can't it. Can't wait to see that. So it's exciting stuff. It's it's coming to the end. We're in the fourth quarter. That's it. And I'm ready to put it in the end zone. Yeah. And I appreciate your support because you've been, you know, helping me the whole way through. And, um, and 100%. It, it means a lot. You got my endorsement. You got my vote. Thank uh, you. Vote row B for Tony G. There it is. There it is. Thanks so much, my friend. Great luck in two weeks. Um, But I need one promise for you, from you. Okay. You win, which you will. Let's say sometime sometime, sometime next year. (laughs) Yes. You know, wintertime, after the Super Bowl. After the Super Bowl? You will do like a, uh, we'll do a pod. Okay. But you have to clean your slate. Okay. And we're going to have some cocktails. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it is day drinking with dog, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Hey, yeah. Yeah. hey listen, I know the ex mayor right. liked his beers. Let's not okay. be fucking shy here. So, <laughs> okay. I'm not saying we're going to throw back six martinis, but right. we'll have a couple of Vivas because the show is sponsored by Vivas. We'll celebrate. Concert. We'll celebrate, okay. have a couple of drinks, and, uh, and we'll. You know, together look at the vision in the future of Milford. All right. That's, that's, a that's a deal. That's a deal. That's a deal. All right, Tony. Thanks so much again. Um, I'm sure I'll see you before uh, two weeks from now, but uh, I'll hunt you down on, uh, on Tuesday, November 7th. Get Thank little, you. Get a little selfie with you and a nice handshake. I appreciate you. You got it, my friend. Thank Have a you. good one.